Hi, welcome to the noise pad. Let's take a look at something rather unique today. I've always been interested in different display technologies, particularly really, really low power ones. And I made a video about e-paper a while ago. Now, typically these kind of displays are electrochromatic, the ones where you apply a voltage and then you can change the color of something, typically because of some induced electric field and you're moving particles around. So I came across this particular company called Invisible and they sent me a little uh, kind of a design kit or a, a demo kit and you can see the different kind of little displays that are in here and you can peel off they're basically on this flexible material and they, they have the electrodes directly exposed. Now these are ridiculously easy to use because of the fact that you can just connect them to microcontroller IOs directly and then you can change the color. They have obviously some strengths and some weaknesses but these are very very low power. And the way they work is interesting and the data sheet is quite informative and I thought that we'll take a look and see how they work and then play around a little bit with them and see what we can get from them. Like I said, very very low power and customizable. These are just some examples in the design kit. So let's take a look. Now here's the website for Invisible and as you can see it's clearly marketed towards heavily customizable products. So you have certain design that is totally unusual in a weird shape potentially so showing some really unique information. You design that and once you design it then you would just mass manufacture it. That, that one of the reasons this kind of style of marketing works I think is because of the way these displays are, are made. They, these are lamination and printing process. So naturally, just like anything that you laminate and print, once you do the initial design, you can mass manufacture them and cut them into any shape you want and then embed them into your product. And you combine that with the fact that it's ultra low power, you can get some interesting applications out of it. So let's take a look at a data sheet that has some interesting information about this type of display. Now as with most electrochromic displays, the amount of energy you need to change the state of one of these displays, and these are reflective, is going to scale with the total area of the display, because that's how much work you need to do. And so you can adjust therefore how much energy you want to put into the system and calculate how much area you can have or vice versa. In this particular case, we're looking at about a microwatt a per centimeter square. So if you have very little amount of information to display in a very small area, you can have very, very efficient uh, kind of transitions. Now that by transitioning these displays, you're losing just the ambient light. So depending on how much contrast you get between the two states, that's the kind of the readability of these type of displays. And we can take a look at it when we play around with it. Now one of the nice things about these displays is that they are semi-bistable. They're not completely stable in the two states, like let's say an e-paper would be. But this semi-bistable is over a very long period of time. And depending on how much contrast you want to maintain, you can don't have to refresh these very often at all. And if, if you leave them for a long time, they slowly disappear. The display slowly disappears. And that can have some benefits in, you know, for security and other purposes if the power runs out or the communication is cut off with your unit, for example. A fairly long life, 100,000 switches is pretty good. So let's go over down here and take a look at what happens with time. So if you look at the function of time, this plot is useful. This is power, uh, this is minutes without power. So 120 minutes is a very long time, it's two hours. Uh, but if you look at starting from, let's say, 100% contrast, that's the maximum contrast you can start with. And as, as a function of time, you can see this will eventually degrade and ultimately you will have nothing left. It fades away, essentially. But it's a very long time, so you don't have to refresh these displays very quickly. The contrast is okay, we'll see could be better in some scenarios but it's still very nice for the kind of things you want to do. Now these are not meant to be very fast. If you look at the coloring and bleaching, this terminology refers to a changing basically between the two states, you're looking at uh, you know, 200, 300 milliseconds and maybe about half a second to go from coloring and bleaching and back and forth. So they're not meant to be refreshed very quickly. You're not going to get uh, fast animations on these things but again they're not meant for these kind of purposes. You have to adjust based on your application. Now controlling these displays is really, really simple because they operate at voltages compatible with basic digital IOs of microprocessors. So you can just directly connect them to an IO or to maybe an IO expander chip, making it really easy. And they behave like capacitors because they're essentially electrodes with uh, some electric field that you want to put between them. So of course they're going to behave like capacitors. Here's an example of what they look like as a function of time and current and looking at a three volt, for example, voltage here. So there's going to be a spike of current when you want to change this state and then depending on how long you want to stay uh, you will reach the maximum contrast each of these two states can give you. There are also some circuit examples. And here we go for the example circuit I and mean, you can get simpler than this. You just use your IOs. That's it. From the microcontroller directly in here really nothing is <laughs> needed even in the middle. If your IOs are between 3 to 5 volts then you're going to need to step down that a little bit in order to not damage the display. But this is 
probably one of my favorite things because you know anyone can just drop this in you don't have to worry about any additional circuitry deployment becomes really inexpensive okay so i think we kind of understand how it works now let's go and play around with it so as part of this kit they also give you a couple of little circuits to help you interface it either with your own microcontroller or just do a very quick experiment so let's take one of these this is just basically a really simple one with two switches to change the state of one of them just so you can get a quick idea let's pick this one and just randomly one of them just pop it in here like so and then you press the button look at that <laughs> it's pretty convenient and really satisfying so that's it then this you can see i can just uh, depending on how long i hold it i can change the the amount of bleaching or coloring i have now once i have fully colored it for example i can just go ahead and remove it and you can see the bistable nature of it it's just going to keep this for a while and it is flexible so i can do this to it quite aggressively actually and then put it back in here and uh, try it again there it is no problem so the fun thing is to connect it to a microcontroller there's a couple of ways to do this you can use this just a simple io interface or you can use this little circuit that they have included and this is basically kind of like an io expander and some more advanced functions are implemented in the arduino library that comes with it. you just connect this to an i squared c interface and then you can put any of these in there and write your own code so let's give that a try and here's an example of a little demo running on the largest multi-segment one that I have in this kit here. And this is running a one second update rate and internally it's a 500 millisecond coloring and bleaching. You need reasonable, nice, and you can see that it has a good contrast. You can obviously extend this time if you don't need to update the display faster. And in that situation, the bleaching and the coloring would be a little bit better. And one of the nice things about, again, driving these with just simple IO is that they're extremely robust. I mean, I can remove this from here and just put it back there's you know it's very difficult to damage these inherently as soon as you put it back you will just simply go back to where it was so i'm really quite happy with the way these things operate now there's another thing that i thought about that i think is possible to do so here are the different segments in the back these are the electrodes if you follow very carefully you can see all the different of course segments of the electrode and one coming over here and this is true about every single one of them so here's one that's just a simple a single square and the back we have the same two now given that this is an electrode i am fairly confident that you could use this also for capacitive touch detection so this can be a button at the same time as a display i think it's possible given that this is a bistable system you could just short them together because nothing will happen in that situation and use it as a capacitive detector or maybe just use one of the terminals as a detector so when you press on it you could actually catch that so i'm going to try and see if i can set this up for another video maybe i have some idea with projects that i want to build with this but it's an idea that maybe you guys would want to explore as well. And there you have it, a quick overview of the invisible electrochromatic display. I have a link to their website directly in the video description if you want to check them out. This is not a tracked link or an affiliate link. I get no monetary benefit at all from this. I just thought this would be a cool technology to demonstrate. And I have some ideas that I might want to put this into some of my own projects. I hope you liked it. I'll see you next time.